Consider this equation. The square root of x plus 4 is equal to the cube root of 4x plus 7. What is the value of x in this equation? Feel free to take a minute and try this problem if you want to. Go ahead and pause the video and work on it. So what's our first step here? What we could do is convert the radicals into exponential fractions. The square root of x plus 4, the index numbers of 2, is equal to x plus 4 raised to the 1 half. The cube root of 4x plus 7, that's equal to 4x plus 7 raised to the 1 third. Now, in order to make this problem easier, we need to get rid of the fractional exponents. So what is the least common multiple of 2 and 3? The least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So what we want to do is raise both sides of the equation to the 6th power. Now, when you have one exponent raised to another exponent, you can multiply the two exponents. So 1 half times 6 is equal to 3. So on the left, we're going to have x plus 4 raised to the third power. On the right, 1 third times 6 is 2, or 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we're going to have 4x plus 7 raised to the second power. Now, let's expand that expression, x plus 4 raised to the third power. It turns out that there is a formula that can help us to expand that expression. So we don't need to FOIL or use the binomial theorem. And here it is. a plus b raised to the third power is equal to a cubed plus 3a squared times b plus 3ab squared and then plus b to the third power. So let's say that x is a, b is 4. So a to the third is going to be x to the third plus 3. Instead of a squared, it's going to be x squared. And then times b, which is 4, plus 3a, or 3x, times b squared. That's going to be 4 squared. And then plus 4 to the third power. So x plus 4 raised to the third power, we can replace it with x cubed. 3 times 4 is 12, so this is going to be plus 12x squared, and then plus 4 squared is 16 times 3x. That's going to be 48x, and then 4 to the third, 4 times 4 times 4. That's going to be positive 64. So now let's expand 4x plus 7 squared, and we could use this formula a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So a is going to be 4x and b is going to be equal to 7. So a squared will be 4x squared and then it's going to be plus 2 times 4x times 7 plus b squared or 7 squared. 4x squared, that's going to be 16x squared. And then we have 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 7 is 56. So plus 56x. And then 7 squared, which is 7 times 7, that's going to be 49. So at this point, we need to do some algebra. So let's move everything from the right side to the left side. So what we're going to do is subtract both sides by... 16x squared, and then by 56x, and by 49. So everything on the right side will cancel. And so we're going to get x cubed. Now 12 minus 16, that's going to be negative 4. And then 48 minus 56, that's negative 8. But it's going to be negative 8x. And then 64 minus 49 is positive 15. So what we have is a cubic polynomial x cubed minus 4x squared minus 8x plus 15. So how can we solve this cubic polynomial? What would you recommend that we should do in order to get the answer? What we could do is list the possible roots or the possible zeros of this 
cubic function. So the lean coefficient is 1, and the constant term is 15. So factors of 15 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 15, divided by the factors of the leading coefficient, which is just plus or minus 1. So let's start with the positive values. We're going to use synthetic division, and we're going to look for which one is going to give us a 0. That's going to be a solution to the equation. So let's start with positive 1. That is when x is equal to 1. Now we need to write down the coefficients of the cubic polynomial here. 1, negative 4, negative 8, and positive 15. So we're going to bring down the 1, and then we're going to multiply those two numbers. 1 times 1 is 1, and then we're going to add. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, and then 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and then add. Negative 8 plus negative 3 is negative 11, and then multiply. 1 times negative 11 is negative 11. Adding those two numbers will give us positive 4. So because the last number, because the remainder is not 0, that means that 1 is not a solution. Now let's move on to the next number in the list. That is x equals 3. So we have 1, negative 4, negative 8, 15. Just like before, let's bring down the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. And then negative 4 plus 3, that's negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 11. And then 3 times negative 11 is negative 33. And then 15 plus negative 33, that's going to be negative 18. So this doesn't work either. x equals 3 is not a solution. So let's try 5. Let's see if that's going to work. That should be a negative 4. And let's put the 5 on the outside. So 1 times 5 is 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. So we do get a 0, which means that x equals 5 is a solution. So to factor this original expression, it's going to be x minus 5 due to this answer. And then what we see below here, this is going to be 1x squared plus 1x minus 3. So this is times x squared plus x minus 3. Now to get the other zeros, we need to use the quadratic formula. So right now we have one solution, x is equal to 5, but let's see if there are any other solutions to this equation. So here is the quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And we need an equation in this form, which we have it here. So a is 1 b is 1, c is negative 3. So plugging all that in into this formula, we're going to have negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3 divided by 2 times 1. So 4 times negative 3 is positive 12 plus 1 squared. That's going to be 13. Now let's get the decimal value of these numbers. So negative 1 minus the square root of 13 all divided by 2 is equal to approximately negative 2.3028. So that's a rounded answer. And then negative 1 plus the square root of 13 all divided by 2 that's equal to positive 1.3028 approximately. Now what we need to do is make sure that all of the answers that we have work. Because sometimes all the answers may be correct, some of them may be correct, and other times none of them may be correct. So we need to check our solutions. So first we had the square root of x plus 4, and that was equal 
to the cube root of 4x plus 7. So let's test our first solution. x is equal to 5. So this is going to be the square root of 5 plus 4. And let's see if that's equal to the cube root of 4 times 5 plus 7. 5 plus 4 is 9. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 7. That's 27. The square root of 9 is 3. The cube root of 27 is 3. So this works. So we have at least one answer to that equation. Let's try another one. So plugging in 1.3028. Let's use 1.3 to keep it simple. So this is going to be 1.3 plus 4, which is 5.3. And then 4 times 1.3, that's 5.2 plus 7. So this is going to be about 12.2. So the square root of 5.3 is approximately 2.3. And 12.2 raised to the 1 3rd power is also about 2.3. So this answer is correct. Now let's check the last one. Let's use negative 2.3. So we're going to have negative 2.3 plus 4. Let's see if that's equal to the cube root of 4 times negative 2.3 plus 7. Negative 2.3 plus 4, or 4 minus 2.3, that's 1.7. And then 4 times negative 2.3, which is negative 9.2 plus 7, that's negative 2.2. Now the square root of 1.7 is about 1.3. And the cube root of negative 2.2 is negative 1.3. So we have a mismatch in signs, therefore, we can accept that solution. So the solutions that we do have are x equals 5 and x equals 1.3028. So that's it for this video.